for the pair who led the club to last season's title. Coach Vim Janssen and his assistant Murdo McLeod were there as guests of ex-director Brian Dempsey. A gala day for Celtic and it was watched by commentator Rob McLean. And there it is, ready to be unfurled. On the left of the players and management. A few words from Tom Boyd before Fergus McCann pulls on that court. And then we'll see the league flag for 97 98. Celtic start the season with a bang. There's the league flag. The last one, which was fluttering above Celtic Park, undoubtedly showing the signs of wear and tear. But there's a crisp new replacement. The days of 1 to 11 are gone at squad numbers for the new Premier League, and opportunity is knocking in this Celtic lineup for number 19, Malky Mackay, and number 20, Reggie Blinker. Reaper, Mahe, Vikorst, and O'Donnell are all injured. Mackay slots into a back three alongside Alan Stubbs and Tom Boyd. Blinker plays on the left side of a four man midfield, and the attacking options are increased with Henrik Larsson playing behind a front two of Simon Donnelly and Harold Bratback. Paul Lambert wears the number 14, which was on his back playing for Scotland at the World Cup, and his reputation was further enhanced in France with some classy performances. This is the Dunfermline team for day one of the domestic season. Left back Scott McCulloch is suspended, so Scott Thompson steps in. Britain and Petrie are ruled out. Richard Huxford, brought in from England at the tail end of last season, has a key midfield role to play, and David Linnigan is a new boy at the back. Six foot two Linnigan will be the smallest of Dunfermline's back three. Andy Todd and Craig Ireland have the edge over him. Thompson and Greg Shields are the wing backs. Mark Miller and Hamish French will hope to supply the ammunition to the strikers. Leading the attack and leading the side now after signing a four year contract to stay at Dunfermline is Andy Smith. He'll do well to get near his scoring tally of last season 26 goals. The referee for Celtic Dunfermline is Kenny Clark. The Scottish Premier League is underway and it's champion Celtic against Dunfermline in their third season back in the top flight and they get more and more impressive every time you see them strongly tipped in the last couple of seasons to go back down into the first division but they love being written off Celtic supporters will remember that on the second Saturday of last season, Dunfermline came here and won by two goals to one. It's a good ball from Alan Stubbs trying to pick out the run of Henrik Larsson. First touch for Ian Westwater. It's Andy Smith's flick finding George Shaw. Mark Miller. Linking with Greg Shields, good build up. In from Shields and drifting over the top of Jonathan Gould's crossbar. The build up was certainly good there. Greg Shields very much involved, set up by Miller, but off target with the cross. It was won by Huxford. Stuffy defending from Dunfermline. Celtic fans reckon that was out of Mark Miller, but clear on, and now Lambert. Bratback's just ahead of him, here he is. Can Bratback thread it through? In the end, the shot at goal, which cannoned off Craig Ireland. A goal scorer during the week in that Champions League qualifier in Dublin, Harold Bratback, and no second thoughts there about the crack at goal. Stubbs is on the near post for the blinker corner. Held it away by Andy Smith, who's hit the ground and he's in trouble. This will be a big worry for Dunfermline. Smith grounded in the penalty area. He fell badly by the looks of it as he jumped for the header. 
to clear the corner kick and this could be very costly for Dunfermline sympathetic applause what a huge blow this is for Dunfermline and on in Smith's place comes 20 year old Craig Falkenbridge on an extended loan spell from Coventry City and Celtic remember him well as the man who scored the goal last season at the tail end which delayed the championship party Hurley for Stubbs knocked over the top of Greg Shields head for Reggie Blinker Shields will remember a Reggie Blinker shot from last season which went in off the Dunfermline full back that was Harold Brackback's effort from long range not too much of a problem this for Ian Westwater but certainly a lot of confidence about Harold Brackback which wasn't too evident at times last season Brackback's flick for Larson that's well played by Brackback but it's toe to the ball through to Craig Burley Burley gets it back from Lambert a lot happening here for Celtic, in from Donnelly, McNamara, charged down by Linnigan. And the Celtic supporters enjoyed that. The team getting forward in big numbers. And this was a real threat to Dunfermline. The pass there from Craig Burley and McNamara's shot back off Linnigan. Barley to Blinker, moving at pace, three up ahead of him, Simon Donnelly making a run in behind, still Blinker, and Reggie Blinker forcing the corner kick, although there were targets in the middle, Donnelly, Larson, brought back, all waiting, but Reggie Blinker unable to find the ball in, which would have offered a goal scoring opportunity in the middle there who fashioned last season's league success guests here today Vim Janssen and Murdo McLeod corner kick taken by McNamara and now well dealt with by Ian Westwater who plucked the ball off the head of Malky Mackay he was in a really threatening position at the near post the short corner quickly taken Mackay the target good hands from Westwater Nicely flighted ball from Jackie McNamara. And that's good goalkeeping. Simon Donnelly back in a deep position, linking with Alan Stubbs and now Tom Boyd. Reggie Blinker is down the touchline. And in some room in the middle is Craig Burley. Gets it back from Simon Donnelly. Good movement off the ball. Donnelly's available again, here he is, shaping for the shot. Good covering by Andy Todd, but that's for Blinker. Blinker back onto the right foot now. Craig Burley's shot, came off him as French. Here's Donnelly. Simon Donnelly's efforts. A touch too high, but well worth it. Celtic were queuing up at the edge of the area. Burley had an effort, Reggie Blinker thought about it, and then finally cutting in, it was Simon Donnelly. Blinker to McNamara, that's for Brockback, Burley's up ahead of it, here is Craig Burley! A good challenge that by Ian Westwater, brave goalkeeping and it foils Craig Burley, when he looked as if he was poised to give Celtic the lead look at the running off the ball here McNamara, Burley, Larson the effort at goal was from Craig Burley lifted over Westwater but the goalkeeper did enough to make sure that the Burley effort was off target out of the corner of his eye Burley must have seen the yellow jersey bearing down on him and he took a knock in the process as well and that was an important intervention the new management team in the Celtic dugout Dr. Josef Wengloss and his assistant Eric Black here's Tom Boyd 
The long ball looking for Henrik Larsson's run. David Linnigan got his head to it. Larsson's not giving it up. And now Simon Donnelly, fouled by Richard Huxford. And immediately the yellow card shown to Huxford for bringing Donnelly to the ground. McNamara on the free kick, finding Craig Burley. He'll be disappointed that he couldn't put that header on target. He found a lot of space right at the heart of the Dunfermline defence. There'll be an inquiry about the room he was given here, but Burley couldn't punish them. Poor distribution from Jonathan Gould that time. And Celtic fortunate to have the ball back. Good pass from Craig Burley, finding Brett back. Simon Donnelly running onto it. A short charge down. More frustration for the Celtic players and the supporters. Good play from Paul Lambert. Almost taking too long. Falkenbridge was chasing him. Alan Stubbs. Henrik Larsson alongside him, brought back up ahead, here's Hannel Pratberg! So close to number one. A good effort from Bratback. Criticised last season a lot of the time, Harold Bratback, but 10 goals from 21 appearances, not a bad ratio, and nearly number 11 for Celtic there. Picked out by Larsson, good movement again. And Westwater happy to see this go over the top. The back heel from Lambert. Craig Burley had to stretch to get there. Donnelly's effort came off Andy Todd. And there are increasing signs of frustration about the Celtic players as they try to find new ways of getting through this confirmed defence. Free kick taken quickly there. Back from Larson to Craig Burley, well struck! That's the opening goal! 90 seconds into stoppage time at the end of the first half. And somehow it had to be Craig Burley. His first goal of the season. He scored 15 times last season, the Football Writers Player of the Year. A scorer for Scotland at the World Cup as well. And when this was laid back cleverly by Henrik Larsson, it always looked likely that the Burley shot would end up in behind Ian Westwater. And that's the reaction that it provoked on the Celtic bench. That's our time. And Craig Burley's goal inside stoppage time, giving Celtic the lead. And there'll be a lot of relief about that goal, apart from the obvious delight because Celtic were looking frustrated, they'd had so much of the game and so many chances. This was a headed opportunity for Malky Mackay, the ball plucked off his head by Ian Westwater, then it was Burley through the middle, foiled again by the Dunfermline goalkeeper's dive. That was an effort from Simon Donnelly which cannon back off this stout Dunfermline defence and Harold Bratback's effort there just too high. Then 90 seconds into stoppage time, Craig Burley's shot deflected off Ireland behind Ian Westwater and these Celtic fans are happy because it's Celtic 1, Dunfermline 0. Dunfermline get the match restarted. That Celtic goal must have been a real blow to them. They've kept Celtic at bay for so long. 46 and a half minutes of the first half. By the time Craig Burley blasted the ball home. And Dunfermline, obviously highly inconvenienced by the early loss of skipper and striker Andy Smith. And Donnelly almost getting in each other's way. Now Donnelly pressing on. Blinker spotting Craig Burley, but Burley thought that was running through for Henrik Larsson and left it. In from McNamara, Brad Park's header. Couldn't keep it down. That's disappointing for how Brad Park. That was a real chance for number two. 
A well-delivered cross from McNamara. This was pinpoint accuracy, but the header too high. Brat Bart would have expected to have at least forced Westwater into a save here. It's well done by Harold Bratback and quickly moved on by Blinker. Harold Bratback again on the end of Lambert's pass. Larson and Donnelly in the middle. Bratback going it alone. Stumbled as he shot. He's applauded by Henrik Larson. He might well have felt that he could have been on the end of the pass there. But Bratback keen to have a crack himself. It was all going well until here. Boyd for Donnelly. Held back there by Andy Todd. Won by the blonde head of Burley, and again, this time with his foot. Good pass for Simon Donnelly! That's number two! Dunfermline will feel that they might well have got that clear. But you have to give credit to the tenacity of Burley and the perfect pass to Simon Donnelly and that shot was always a scorer. Here is where Dunfermline might have gotten away, taken on by Craig Burley, had a quick look, quickly shifted on to Donnelly and there is a clinical finish for Simon Donnelly's first goal of the season, 16 last time round. Miller, Shaw against Mackay, chested down by Boyd for Lambert, Craig Burley spotting that Harold Blackback was on the run, here comes Blackback, chance for number three, kicks the ground in disgust, Blackback knows that by now he really should have added to his European goal in the midweek. It was a good run, he really is quick, found by Burley. But that shot sliced well off target. Darren Jackson there, waiting to come on. And it's Harold Bratbach so who gives way. Tim Janssen, a figure still much loved around Celtic Park. It must have been a strange feeling for him at the start to see the league flag unfurled. And he's sitting up in the director's box with Josef Wenglos down in the dugout. Running into French. That's a good pass. Greg Shields can keep this in. Having a look at what's available in the middle. Falkenbridge didn't quite time the run. And that's the sort of situation in which Ben Furman would have looked at Andy Smith to profit. Sadly for them, he lasted only eight minutes of the match. McNamara rules it for Jackson, neat touch for Donnelly. And that's for Henrik Larsson, a chance here for Larsson. He's rounding Westwater. And unbelievably, the chance goes a begging. The Celtic supporters were looking for this to be nestling in the net. Henrik Larsson had done everything else. The run was well timed. Drifted away from Westwater, but off balance as he tried to hammer this in from an acute angle. Oh, that's neat play from Paul Lambert. So confident, so much in control. Now Darren Jackson, over the top of Greg Shields, inviting for Reggie Blinker, and so close from Craig Burley, so close to his second and Celtic's third. That was uh, an excellent ball played in by Reggie Blinker. He had a look there, and this ball curled away from the diving Westwater. And all it needed was a touch from Burley, 
and it was in the net. Linnigan's free kick. Andy Todd couldn't do much with it. Tom Boyd's clearance. Darren Jackson proving a hot handful for Ivo Den Beeman. Having a look at what's available in the middle. Nice pass for Henrik Larsson. Onto the left foot from Larsson. And it was charged down. I think it took a touch off Derek Ferguson. And it just trickled through to Westwater. Good play here from Jackson. Did well in the setting up of Henrik Larsson. Fainted as if to shoot with his right. Then the effort with the left foot deflected off Ferguson. Good from header from Mackay. Jackson stumbles, Celtic still have it. It's Larson and Craig Burley. And very nearly off Andy Todd, trickling into his own goal and thwarting Craig Burley. This was agonising for Westwater and a yard wide. Falkenbridge with the head flick. That's a lapse. And George Shaw can take advantage here. It's Shaw. Saved by Goulds. Apologies offered by Alan Stubbs for that lapse. And it could have been a costly one. Here's Jackson. Off Linnigan. Jackson again. Charged down this time by Den Beeman. And Jackson all the way back to make the challenge. And Mark Miller, who wanted too much time on the ball. Lambert and Donnelly. Henrik Larson's up ahead of him. Jackson two. And Jackie McNamara alongside. That's well played by Huxford. Tenacious got in in front of Donnelly. Andy Todd. Craig Falkenbridge couldn't control it. Alan Stubbs. Very happy indeed that this didn't lead to more serious repercussions. George Shaw, a real chance to pull one back for Dunfermline. Good goalkeeping from Gould. A foul by Ferguson on Burley. Burley on the free kick, through for Reggie Plinker. Well, I wonder if Reggie Plinker should have had a quicker hit there. He might well have done better. Great vision from Burley. Superb ball for Reggie Plinker. And maybe here was the point at which Plinker should have had the shot at goal. In the end, it didn't trouble Westwater. Superb first domestic game of the season for Craig Burley. A goal, carving out all sorts of chances and looking masterful in the middle. Well, Mark Miller and Paul Lambert almost ended up running down the tunnel together there. And Lambert wagging his finger in the direction of the Dunfermline dugout. Obviously, words were hard there. There was shirt tugging. Linnigan's left foot, finding shields. But not much chance for Falkenbridge to make anything of that. Tom Boyd doing the defending, and now quickly moved on by Gould. To Mackay on the other side. That's a push on Donnelly by Todd. And Donnelly foiled in his efforts, taking the free kick quickly. He's taken now, gets it back from McNamara. First time into the middle, underneath it, Greg Shields. And not quite knowing what was happening in behind him. He had to turn that one behind for a corner. Back from Blinker to Burley. Well-weighted pass for McNamara. All the way over to the other side now, Donnelly. Lofted in, 
Malky Mackay's header! That's 3 0. And a sweet moment for Malky Mackay. A looping header which beat Westwater after a Celtic had tried down the left then shifted it right and that's well away from Westwater hung up in the air for Mackay by Donnelly and kept his eyes firmly fixed on the ball Mackay and directing the header where the goalkeeper couldn't get to it now Jackson and Simon Donnelly and Craig Burley can this be number four? it certainly can two goals in less than a minute for Celtic and that's 4-0 Celtic were hoping for a championship party with the unfurling of the flag beforehand and that's now the way it's turning out a second goal for Craig Burley and 4-0 set up by Donnelly and never much doubt about where that was heading and this is no more than Craig Burley deserves it's been a five-star performance from him just a minute of the regulation 90 left plus stoppage time to be allocated and Celtic who struggled to make the breakthrough in terms of goals have reaped rich rewards in the second half long ball from Alki Mackay Darren Jackson working it on to Burley and that's the hat-trick three for Burley five for Celtic It's polite applause and all very calm down in the dugout. And there's that gap toothed smile that says Craig Burley is off to a sensational start in the new season. On day one, a hat trick set up by Darren Jackson. And I'm sure the injury to Ian Westwater possibly explains why this shot got through. This was one that the goalkeeper would hope to have stopped but it went under his body and into the net and who can deny Craig Burley his moment Blinker to Lambert looking for Donnelly good tidying up work by Thompson the pass for Den Beeman a bit too much from Paul Lambert there and surrendering the ball to Ferguson, offside Falkenbridge he wasn't a popular figure when he held up the celebrations last season for Celtic but he hasn't been able to do much damage to them today Stubbs releasing Henrik Larsson Linnigan's with him back for Jackson the chip shot from the edge of the box well worth the effort and especially when you see Ian Westwater hobbling and this was well judged by Jackson and it was a difficult job for Westwater to prevent that crossing the line nodded out by Alan Stubbs looking a very assured customer outstanding last season for Celtic after being less than convincing the season before. Now Ferguson for Dunfermline, but it's all gone for Dunfermline, and the season starts in some style for Josef Venglos and for Celtic. They couldn't have hoped for more. Simon Donnelly scored the first goal of the second half after Craig Burley had opened his account in stoppage time at the end of the first. At that point, the floodgates were open. Malky Mackay nodded in number three. And then it was the Craig Burley show. He scored number four and five for Celtic. That completed his hat-trick. 
a performance of true quality from Craig Barley and the same can be said of this whole Celtic side lots of poise, lots of assurance, lots of confidence and they're going to take a lot of beating as they set out in defence of the title in this new Scottish Premier League campaign Dunfermline have quickly left the scene it's been a day they'll want to forget and it's a day these Celtic fans will long remember it started with the flag being unfurled and it ended with a scoreline of Celtic 5, Dunfermline 0 Dr. Finglas, you must be absolutely delighted with that performance. Yeah, of course, I'm very happy with the uh, performance and the uh, players I have been enjoying themselves. But what is more important is I have been giving nice feelings to the 60,000 people. And that is the only privilege for a good and top players to do that, and it was nice. I'm very delighted. With it. How would you analyse the, the quality, though, of the, of the Celtic performance? Of course, when we start to play, it was even game, our opposition so have been well prepared, but slowly during the game we have been able to improve pace of the game, quick passing, and uh, from those situations we have been creating goal opportunity and we score a goals too. Craig, not a bad wee day for you in the first day of the season? No, a great start for, uh, for myself and for the team, uh, I think as well for the supporters, a bit of confidence that will give them and uh, I thought all in all it was a good performance. Again, we had to break them down, we did that and it opened up for us in the end. The bookies make Rangers favourites at the moment, but uh, on the evidence of this sort of performance, I'm certainly going to take a lot of beating. Well, we're not here to give the title up easy, and I think when you're talking about favourites, I think it's because they've brought in a lot of players and spent a lot of money, and, and we haven't, but we did that last season and we struggled for a little while, so I'm quite pleased the way things have went, and I think it's been a bonus for us to keep a steady unit and keep everything together, and everybody knows each other, uh, and we're a year further on, so... They can make who they want for you, but all we've got to do is be just in the park. And we're confident. We've got a, a new stadium here with the, the stand being finished. It's a magnificent place to play. And we're looking forward to it, and we're going to be in there for a battle all the way. How big a blow was Andy Smith? I mean, how, how big is the Andy Smith factor in, in the 5 0 defeat? Well, as everybody knows, last year Andy scored 26 goals, so he's a, he's a big man for us. He's, he's the skipper. And to lose him early was a bit of a blow, but I felt we had uh, survived that. And we, were, we were coping quite well until we were caught with a sucker punch. Just just on half time, which should never have happened because it was something we spoke about and for it to happen was uh, very annoying. But you have to put down today, I suppose, as, as a superb Celtic performance and, and uh, you know, they, they won't play much better from than that. From their point of view, I suppose it was superb, but from our point of view, uh, I think we give them too many goals. And uh, if you give a bad team goals like that, you'll have a problem with them. If you give a good team like Celtic goals like that, you'll get a chase, in which, we, which we did.